Politics Unplugged is back, and no, I'm not sitting in the chair anymore. We're pleased to be joined <laughs> by former Denver Mayor Wellington Webb. Thanks for being here with My us. My pleasure. Uh, so you have always, since 07, 08, been a Hillary Clinton supporter. My first question is, when was the last time you either met with her or spoke with her? Last trip she was in, I uh, spoke to her, and then um, we had a couple of meetings in Brooklyn where I've spoken with her as well as uh, President Clinton and the Brooklyn National Campaign staff. So w since your time, almost a decade's worth of, of being an active Hillary Clinton for President supporter, what is it that an independent voter should know that we don't quite know that you've seen change over time that's going to make a difference for an independent voter saying, yep, I'm going to vote for her? Well, I think and hope that most independent voters as well as voters in general would look for what I think you would look for if you were hiring a CEO for a business or a company. You want stability. You want predictability. You want someone that has a proven track record. You want to support someone where you know where they stand. Uh, and you want someone that um, doesn't make automatic divisions and it believes that everyone sh by bringing everyone in, it makes a stronger company, a stronger business, a stronger country. Uh, we have a big tent, so we don't push people off if they have disabilities or if you happen to be Muslim or if you happen to be Latino or if you happen to be black. We think the tent's large enough for everyone under the umbrella of American. And Mr. Mayor, I know that Donald Trump has been most recently really pushing hard into the minority communities. And his message is, what do you have to lose? What do you say to that? Um, well, when he says, make America great again, and taking us back to where we were before, I don't want to see segregated water fountains. Uh, I don't want to see sitting in the back of the bus. Uh, I'm glad to see he's going to church because I know he's going to a black church in Detroit, which means we'll pray for him, and uh, that he senses a different uh, belief that, um, as President Obama likes to say, we're better than that. And uh, he, he takes shots at people that, to me, aren't, it's, it's not the American way. Um, I'm really concerned about the direction of our country. I know a lot of people are angry. Um, but that anger is not going to settle America's problems. I want someone that understands what NATO is about. I want someone that understands what it's like to take Osama bin Laden down. I want someone that understands what it means to deal with the federal budget and deal with mayors and governors around the country. The polls are close, though. This is a, a very tight race. Right. What is it that... Um, you think will we'll make the difference in this case when it comes down to November voting? Well, I think what will we'll make the difference in uh, the election at the final outcome are a lot of new voters, especially for us, a lot of Sanders voters, a lot of uh, millennials. At the end of the day, they're going to have to make a choice as to whether they want to go backwards or whether they want to go forward. And I think Hillary Clinton takes them forward. And I think that's why so many people even business people like Meg Whitman coming out, who's a staunch Republican, Republican businesswoman, is out on the circuit. Uh, Warren Buffett is not your average, everyday uh, small business guy. He understands what's in the country's best interest is also in his financial best interest, which is in, means it's in the best interest of the America as a whole. And um, People get angry with politics and politicians, and I, I get that, I understand that, because a lot of times people work hard and they wonder why it's not better for them. Um, but being angry at the system is not going to fix that. Participating in the system, supporting a candidate, and then working with them while they're in office fixes that. Mayor Webb, as someone who came from behind in your race for mayor, are, do you see any parallels of the gap that you might see between Clinton and Trump and what Donald Trump is trying to do to close that. Any parallels to anything that you achieved to win your race? Uh, no, because I was trying to expand my base. He's trying to limit his. Um, when I was running for mayor, we started out at 7%. Initially, the only people we had supporting us primarily drove Volkswagens, Chevrolets, and pickup trucks. Mm -hmm. At the end of the election, when I saw the BMWs and the Mercedes honking their horns, I knew we had crossed the gamut. Uh, what Hillary has always said is we're stronger, united. 
I think a lot of people really don't know her, and I think it's uh, also what I think women tend to do. Um, I get a lot of this from my wife. She tells me that uh, men tend to oversell themselves. Women, t <laughs> women tend to undersell themselves. I don't know that we have enough time to go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I believe that because I've hired enough people where the man always really talks so much more about what he brings to the mm -hmm. table. The woman always is a little hesitant and resident to do that. And what? I think a lot of people just really don't know her and the more and the more they get to know her, I think the more comfortable they'll be. Let's talk about your city of Denver because you, sure. you, you ruled the roost here for a long time. What are you seeing now that uh, maybe you look back and go, I wish I would have done more about transportation or housing or? Well, two things come to mind real quick. When I first ran, uh, Denver's population was 467,000 mm -hmm. people, and they used to say you could roll a bowling ball down 16th Street <laughs> and you wouldn't hit anyone. And I said, what I really want to do is build Denver up by fighting crime and emphasizing basic city services and make everyone feel good. So when Denver became what perceived as bad by some people, Sanctuary City, I just basically said, you just can't go and automatically arrest Latinos because they're Latino. You have to have cause for that. So I want a city that everyone is represented. Now when I look at what I see in the city, I see too much traffic, too many people. <laughs> so we were successful and all of that success has now uh, created different kinds of problems. I'm, I'm always concerned about our homeless population because it's so large. And I can always tell out-of-state drivers because they <laughs> tend to honk more and they don't do well on snow. I would say the same, but I agree with that. I know some in-state <laughs> drivers. Yeah, that yes. <laughs> we only have about like 20 seconds. This may be unfair for, for the end here, but uh, I know you've been outspoken about Mile High being in the name of Mile High Stadium. The, the sponsor pays for upgrades inside the stadium. That's where that money goes. So if Mile High was the name, who would pay for the upgrades to the stadium so that we wouldn't have to build a brand new stadium? Well, you don't have to build a brand new stadium, but that, that could be negotiated between the team and the stadium district because taxpayers paid for that stadium. Denver Broncos paying for upgrades to their own stadium. I can get on board with that. Yeah. How about that? Mr. Mayor, we're okay. delighted to have you here with All us. Right. So thank, thank you. you so much for your time. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. We'll be right back.